Okay. I'm trying something different out right now because my dogs are hanging out outside. I'm looking after them. And, um, you know, sometimes I would just be doing some gardening or something like this while I look after my dogs. But um, it's the winter right now. I guess there might be a few things to do. But um, I was having a conversation. Somebody posted a link about the astrology podcast and a, a video they did recently on naturalism. And I had been thinking about this, the whole topic of naturalism. And I also noticed that for me, it kind of came up while also I was doing some videos where I was like using some screen, some footage of recorded v of video games, which are decidedly not very natural. And that one of the things that I've been doing recently was like, because it was winter and video games were on sale and it was kind of like the weather was not so nice. I was getting through some, uh, whatever, some, the dark, not so whatever, dreary part of winter by playing video games and stuff like that. But I have to say that the, just being outside in fresh air feels a lot better than being on the computer. Right. And that there's something about, um, the whole thing also too about talking about reading lots of books and stuff like this is that books and the whole there's a kind of often a bias against intellectualism or there's a certain the naturalism to me kind of goes with this thing about getting out and being in the world right rather than just being at home in your head to be out involved in the world doing something and there's this association that doing philosophy is all about just being in your head rather than being out doing stuff. And But if you actually read the philosophers, Friedrich Nietzsche said that not to, have, not to take any idea seriously that you have, that, you're, that you you're not, don't have when you're not active, you're, or to be out in the world walking, or even, that, or even just in a physiological sense that in like the Buddhists say that there's sitting meditation and there's walking meditation and that the physiological natural element of the even thinking we think about thinking as being somehow separated from the physicality of the body process but to cr think thoughts is actually um, and you know you're using the food that you ate for lunch you're using the air that you're breathing you're using all your the process of being alive and conscious and all this is a product of your environment of what you put into your body of how you take care of yourself and so the quality of your thinking is going to be determined by these kinds of habits by these kinds of dietary choices right um so but there's this whole thing that like as I'm expressing this, what am I doing? I'm communicating to you with language and ideas uh, in a kind of an abstract way. And even if we talk about science, we're talking about a scientific understanding of the material world and all this, it becomes sort of, the communication of it is a linguistic thing, which is by nature what they call the symbolic order. It's sort of separated from the natural world. And that's why you get this whole thing about reading books being a bit, you know, there's a bit of a separation that happens, right? Um, nevertheless, if I am approaching the topic of naturalism and astrology, I have to say that you're talking to a guy with a Sagittarius stellium, and I need to preface this by explaining a little bit about what it's like to be a guy who has a Sagittarius stellium. Um, and that I was in this conversation with somebody made a comment about who posted this stuff about naturalism and astrology that it is actually kind of difficult to like sometimes you don't want to just sit and consume lots of information. Sometimes like I actually have lots of books I'm interested in reading, but my ability to read those books versus how many books I'm collecting does not quite match up. But however, it's like, it's not like I don't, some people might be like, oh, I can't focus because I've got ADHD, but I kind of take it to be more like a, uh, to put everything in its proper balance that it's not actually that you have to have a balanced lifestyle and not just sit around reading books all day, basically. Right. Um, and so what I've been trying to do is to do more, whatever, active physical stuff to balance out just liking to re reading books. And, um, but so one of the things, though, about this idea that I have is that I have finished the first book by Deleuze that I finished was his book on Bergsonism, which is kind of short. And then I also I bought Bergson's Matter and Memory and I have not started reading it. 
I have bought, um, I also have the, had this book for years from Dean Rudyard, who was an astrologer who, was, who came at the end of the Theosophist movement. And it's really interesting for me right now because I was also been into Henry Miller for years and I was just recently finding out that Henry Miller was into astrology because he had his chart done by Dean Rudyard. And so Miller and Rudyard were contemporaries around the same time. And in that era, there was also this guy named Bergson who was a philosopher that you don't... Some of these philosophers, they kind of were like trendy or something like that in an intellectual circle at one point in time, but you don't... Um, Nobody talks about them anymore. They're kind of they're they're flash in the pan of being a thing is kind of gone and like the, there's if you trace the thread of Deleuze, it's interesting because Deleuze go in towards the end of Deleuze's career, Deleuze goes in a very Bergson heavy direction. And, it's, and because his Bergson book is relatively short and easy to read compared to some of his other stuff, that was the first one I finished reading. Um, it's still okay, but the point of all this. I get the point. There's, I'm just first of all, I'm just saying these interesting connections because I, I after reading that the D- Luz book on Bergson, I go back to reading this Dean Rudyard book that I probably picked up like six years ago or something, right? And then, and then I noticed that Dean Rudyard is making references to Bergson in his astrology book, and uh, and and like Dean Rudyard is like an pretty much like an intellectual philosophical kind of guy who's into all this new agey stuff. But the whole thing is like I am as a as a Sagittarius, right? As a Sagittarius, I have only so much time to sit around reading books. I have to live an actual life and do stuff and be in my body and be in the world to balance it out because that's the whole you know that centaur is a animal and a man kind of thing, right? So the um. But I've to, I can go back and read a little bit of Dean Rudyard and see that he's making this reference to Bergson, and I can see that Dean Rudyard did a chart for Henry Miller, and then I can see that Henry Miller is a major character in setting up the whole thing about the anti Oedipus that they, the Deleuze and Guattari do. So there's already this loop that leads from Deleuze to Bergson to Rudyard to Miller back to Deleuze, and the funny thing is that like Dele- and Deleuze I have have met. At some point, I haven't read the whole Thousand Plateaus because it's a massive chunk of difficult text, but the, the small portion of that I've read so far, he de- Deleuze makes a cheeky reference to astrologers reading his work. Um, so I, there has to be, these guys can't be that ignorant to it, right? So, but I'm just, so the whole point is I'm in the process of trying to figure out exactly what the theory, what to say is, and I'll just, so I'm just, this is my introduction, I'll just, See this much, the, as much as I can put together now, and this is. I'm just trying to see that this isn't from me being able to just sit there and read, just sitting around and being able to just do nothing but read tons of books and just b- being able to do this in an instant. This is about me trying to read the same book for like six years or something, right? Or we have a bunch reading the same a bunch of books for the six years and just at, in a staggered kind of pace, right? Um, so. Okay, first of all, I'm not... Okay, another thing is that I'm not a scientist. I've never been very good at science. I'm more into reading, like, whatever, philosophy, arts, literature, and stuff like this. But, so, I'm, there's a certain scientific territory of theoretical physics that I have to admit is a bit foreign to me. But, so bear with me, okay? Um, but there's this whole thing about, let's say, the th- third dimension of space and then space-time, the fourth dimension, right? Where they're, and then they're talking, so, and then, I don't know, some of these funny hippie people really play off this four-dimension, five-dimension, six-dimension, whatever stuff, and I'm not sure, like, I'm not, I'm, talk to people who are into this stuff, so maybe if you guys are listening to this video and you want to have some conversations about what I'm saying, you can pick up on that and take it somewhere, right? But the Bergs, like, the whole thing, okay, space-time, you've got three-dimensional space, where do you get this thing where you make time into the um, the other dimension, the fourth dimension, right? Or is it the fifth dimension? How's it work? Whatever, it doesn't really matter. That, 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 those details are not really important right now. Um, the, it's a, the simple thing is that the way that theoretical physics accounts for the phenomena of time is that if you are using measurements, right, you're measuring a distance, right? So, 
if you think about like the bare minimum of what we need to have to measure distance, you have a point in empty space, and then you have another point in empty space, and that the distance between those points can be measured, and it's like plotting a line on a graph like you're doing math, right? Um, and so that's like the bare minimum of what you need for distance, right? And so where does time come? If you think about like cars and riding bikes or walking or something like that, then you have a distance of point A from point B, and then you have a subject basically, which would be a person or a dog or a car or whatever. And the, the subject travels on point A from point B, and then you measure the speed uh, which the subject you know, how long does it take to get from point A to point B? And then from that, you get a time duration, which is a Bergson goes off this idea of duration, right? So that time basically from a Bergsonian sense is like a duration as perceived psychologically from a subject, right? So that as subjects that we are going along in life from point A to point B, because we live a life where we have to do stuff in the world, right? Like you have to go for a walk, you have to go grocery shopping, you have to go to work, you have to do all this stuff. You have to go from point A to point B and you experience that as a subject in time, right? So, but the thing, the whole thing is that it's taught, in that sense, what we're doing is that we're acknowledging the psychological aspect of time in from that's born out of this thing where the bare minimum of mathematics point a to point b plotting two points on a graph and having a, a subject moving or it could also be you know it doesn't have to be a subject that's conscious you could just have a train that's an automatic train moving at a certain velocity but the the theory here anyways with astrology is that what we're doing is that we're measuring things from a certain beginning as if you're looking at a birth chart and you're plotting a point to mark the beginning of a duration the person's life is a duration and there in from beginning to end marks a kind of a circle right and in that there's a kind of a wholeness and that there are these durations that happen that are like um beats beating the drum and it becomes there's almost this kind of thing where you can bring what starts to sound like a very philosophical so it starts to sound like a very intellectual thing. It's really actually a very primary, you can bring it back to almost a shamanic thing where the, sh the shamans repetitively beat the drum, boom, 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 boom. And that the that kind of thing, without being, if you don't want to be an intellectual about it, if you don't want to be a philosopher from it, there's something in the basic natural reality of the beat of our heartbeat, right? And the rhythm of life. And that we experience the world through primarily our psychological experience of going from point A to point B and everything about that in our natural experience is for one thing the fact that we live on a rotating planet that has dividing our experience into day and night which is a naturalistic part and in order to live a healthy life we have to get a good night's sleep we have to sleep you know if you completely abandon your circadian rhythms it's probably not going to be very healthy for you and so but that all that saying though is that there's this thing going on that's structured in a certain way, which is just, I mean, it's basically just the bare facts of what the physics is, that we're on a big ball that spins around and there's, and there's light and there's darkness. And then from that, you have to structure your life around. And then, then what Bergson calls intuition is being is basic, basic intuition of the obvious physical reality that's there. And so that involves a spinning earth that involves... The, the sun creating light that involves a moon that has more subtle gravitational forces um, that may still have a naturalistic effect, right? And from the, from there, that's the basis of astrology. You've got, are you born during the sun or the day? Do you have a day chart? Do you have a night chart? Where is the sun? Where is the moon? And from, from there, it's like, a, I mean, look, the naturalism though, right? Like, where do you get... They, like this, the problem though is that I when I I, I was listening to the uh, the the guy on the astrology podcast and he's talking about sunspots or something like this, right? Like or when I was like solar flares and and all this, but and pe sometimes when people talk I, like I'll people will ask me something about solar flares and I am a kind of guy I have to I'm just let's just look at that for a second. Like 
because I've posted things and sometimes I get a comment and I'm like, oh, have you noticed all the crazy solar flare activity? And I'm like, I don't pay attention to solar flare activity. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm right and that people who, who make a big fuss of solar flares are silly and there's nothing going on there, but that's just not the direction that I tend to go in. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to dismiss that side of it, but the whole idea, there's still this thing with Chris Brennan and the idea of the principle of causation versus synchronicity, right? And the whole thing about like the natural sciences sort of imply a causational model, right? Which is like, I don't know, this, is it too heavy to like lay on the, the causation thing right now? This is only 15 minutes. I haven't, this is even that bad. It's not like I've been talking for an hour. June, shush. Okay, well, this is convenient. My dogs are barking, so I will leave this as a short one anyways, and maybe, if necessary, I'll come back to the problem. This is the, the BR, I can do it quickly. Do it quickly, just to wrap it up. Um, that David Hume philosopher made this observation that in terms of, because if you look at this whole thing of like time as the psychological perception of a subject moving from point A to point B, like traveling on a distance, and we're basically on a planet that's travel like a big ball that's traveling on a distance with other balls traveling on distances and experiencing durations of time, right? Um, there's, okay, where am I going with this? Um, the causation of what act, okay, what makes the, the the position of the planets create a meaningful thing that you can read and do divination from, and how does that work as, as a naturalistic phenomenon if we're grounding it in naturalism this way, right? Um, and it's still the whole thing of like, I'm reading like the green Gabor Mate's Myth of Normal, and they're and you're, and you're talking about causation of illness and. I was even looking at old Sigmund Freud stuff talking about, like, trauma as, like, they talk about a guy who was, like, berated by his boss publicly, like, publicly humiliated, and then being neurotic, and then the psycho the early psychologists seeing that as a, oh, causation, this man experienced a psychological trauma, and he had a disorder because of this psycho this thing that happened as a social relation with his boss and all this kind of stuff, and it wasn't such, like, a medicalized thing as, like, this guy had, like, a gene that was wrong, or this guy had, like, the wrong protein or something, or this guy needed nutritional deficiency, like, it was, like, no, this guy was traumatized because of social relation with people in his life it wasn't it was and that's a causational factor right but the whole thing about this is that when it come when people get this kind of message people are like it starts getting into this stuff about attachment theory and this whole narrative of like i don't want to just blame my parents i don't want to just blame this and it's actually we, but when you look at it people talk about like a lasagna of trauma is that it's not just one thing that you associate as like this is the problem why i'm messed up but r rather it's like a whole there's an accumulation of all these different factors that coalesce into a given situation and you can't reduce it down to any one thing why any why a certain person's behaving a certain way or why a certain situation is playing out a certain way but with astrology it's like it's in that sense that we can't say that like it's not because you know don't blame your parents but in the same sense you don't blame the planet saturn either you know the planet saturn you know it just goes around there with its rings and it and crushing, you know, crushing rocks into diamonds and stuff like that, but you don't blame it for your, the force of being crushed into diamond in your life. It, just the way you don't blame your parents or something, you know, it's like, or you don't blame your whatever. The tr there's not just one thing that is making your, everything suck or whatever, if that's your problem, right? That there's all sorts of issues and it's a complicated thing, but in the sense of, if you look at it as the point of view of durations, Human life is a fairly small and insignificant thing if you think about like how many people live and die versus the fact that our planet was uh, our moon even our moon at one point in time we didn't earth didn't have a moon and the idea is that a massive object smashed into the earth and 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 
broke off a chunk of the earth into the moon or that the, something of the and there was so if you think about it even even the creation of our astrology structure is a kind of a traumatic event for the planet that experienced it and that the moon is a kind of child of trauma and that there's a um in in this whole thing there's like a uh this sort of poetic kind of dance between the the sun that gives off light and the 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 cold moon baby spinning around orbiting earth want, like wanting attention or something like this right and there's it, the moon gets the 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 association of the the motherly kind of thing and the 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 sun is providing the warm light in a friendly way and it gets this yang kind of thing right and so all the symbolic association i don't know how to explain that naturalistically though um but that's how astrology works that's how i explain it so hopefully this video is okay <laughs> hopefully i didn't annoy whatever if there's any people around who don't like astrology people talking about it on their phones uh but anyways thank you very much for listening